The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our Benefits Eucharist <coughs> on this, the third Sunday of Advent. Jesus is the light of the world. And today we continue our journey through Advent, continuing the story of John the Baptist, the forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ, and thinking about the promise of joy that we as Christians receive through the incarnation, death and resurrection of Jesus. It may be difficult to feel joy at times through this pandemic, through the ever continuing restrictions we are living under and through the depths of the cold, dark, deep winter months. However, joy is what we are promised by Jesus who walks alongside us through the good times in life but also through the more challenging ones. We hope that whether you are here in church or watching online, that God will speak to you during this service. Through our, our acknowledgement we are loved and forgiven, through the readings from scripture, through our prayers and through our remembrance of Jesus' instruction to break bread together. So we now light the third candle on our Advent wreath. I have to remember to light the pink one today, otherwise I shall be in all sorts of trouble from um, people who think it's very important, who know it's very important which colour you light on which Sunday. So I light the third candle. And we light the third candle, the pink one, and to remind us of the joy we are given in our faith. Let us pray. Uncontainable, irrepressible, bubbling up in an explosion of energy. Joy is what the weary are longing for, what our children often embody, and what makes our God smile. It is a priceless treasure. As we wait for the arrival of Jesus, your Son, we pray for peace in our living. As we wait and watch and wonder how you might reveal yourself to us. God, give us joy in your Advent. We light a candle for joy. May it light the way. Oh. <laughs> May it light the way now. So let us say together our prayer of preparation. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, 
and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Collect and readings for the third Sunday of Advent. And so we say together the Collect, the Prayer of the People. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bob and Steve are now going to read our Old and New Testament lessons. Our Old Testament reading is taken from chapter 61 of the book of Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. <coughs> they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. My brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus to you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the word of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you, in you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Would you please stand for the reading of the Gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Bob will now come and preach God's word to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you're all very pleased that in 2021 we're not going to have an election in the UK. Well, sorry, I apologise. In England, our Scottish brothers and sisters will have to put up with what they have. So we're not here going to be bombarded by political manifestos with their promises on offerings of a wonderful future, forgetting all the little problems that may occur. If only we'll, we will vote for the candidate of our choice. I've reached that age in life when I listen to these manifestos and they just make me cross because they only highlight the good points and they don't think of anything else. I suppose I'm looking for leaders who will tell me the truth instead of making impossible promises paid for by somebody else. So it leaves me with the question, what do I make of today's readings? All three are actually manifestos of God's kingdom. Are they impossible promises of what the church should be, paid for by somebody else, some wonderful benefactor who puts in all the effort? Unfortunately, I know many people who angrily turn their back on the church because they're sick of the hypocrisy between these manifestos and what actually they see in reality. So I wonder whether Karl Marx is right when he labels Christianity as the opium of the people and others as pie in the sky when you die completely and utterly separated from the dismal reality of life day to day here in Leyburn under the lockdown of COVID-19. Let alone in the slums of India, wars in Yemen or the Uyghur concentration camps in China. So in this challenging time, I think it behoves us to face up to the gap between God's manifesto of his kingdom and the reality shown in some of our churches. But our three readings today are three different forms of the manifesto of what God thinks it means to be church. Read them, understand them, pray about them, and then look around. If you perceive a gap and know what should be done better, Stephen and I are listening. Our gospel reading can be seen as the equivalent of an explanation of what it needs to be done to implement the kingdom of the coming king. John explains it in words which are familiar 
to those who, like the Pharisees, have spent a lifetime studying the Hebrew Bible. In this short paragraph, John summarises why Jesus is the answer to the Old Testament hope of a coming Messiah. Every phrase of his answer refers back to some part of the Old Testament. Just search it for yourself. An explanation of each detail would take me several hours. But in summary, Jesus is the long-awaited, crowned King Messiah, and therefore you must follow him. Our first reading from Isaiah is the original, which Jesus quoted and is then requoted in Luke's Gospel when he started his ministry in Nazareth. And many call this Jesus' manifesto for his coming kingdom. God talks about setting people free. Wouldn't we love to be set free from all the restraints of living with COVID? He talks about justice. He talks about rejoicing. It's what we all yearn for. But how? How do we make it happen? How do we follow Jesus to proclaim 2021 as the year of God's favour? That's the challenge. Christianity is about today. It's not something that happened 2,000 years ago. And I think the second lesson, the one from Thessalonica, is the quickest way into what it means. By the way, this book, the second letter, the, sorry, the first letter to Thessalonians, is probably the oldest text in the New Testament. It was written within 20 years of Jesus' death to one of the first churches in the Greek mainland, just a year or so after Paul founded it, in about AD 50, if my memory is right. And today's short passage is Paul's summary of his first letter to one of the first churches. So what does it say? There are six points in the short summary, and I, as an expert in management meetings, know that any more than three people forget about it. So you might need to... Remind yourself by looking up the notes in the printed service text. So point one that Paul makes. Rejoice always. Give thanks in all circumstances. Paul starts his summary by telling the congregation to rejoice always, even if it's midwinter in Bellaby. This is not the same as positive thinking. And the best way to explain it is the story of Paul in prison a few months later. He's locked up unjustly, so what does he do? He does not complain, call for his solicitor. He sings hymns of rejoicing. I will rejoice. He sings hymns of rejoicing. And the answer is the doors are blown open by an earthquake and Paul is set free. It seems far-fetched to our modern way of thinking. But the lesson of the New Testament is that God provides the answers to the problems which face us. Sometimes God provides a miracle, and I could talk about that. Sometimes he does not, but instead gives us the strength to endure. My experience is epitomised by what happened to me yesterday. I had to scan in an invoice to send to Paul Carnell to pay for the organ that had turned St Matthews. I had to get a new printer because the old one had died. I had to connect it to the computer. By this time, my renowned short temper had lost its fuse and burnt out. Alison was getting pretty desperate and offered to scan it for herself. But suddenly, in my prayers for something to happen like this, computer to work and talk to the printer I got a little thought I said why not tell the printer to print first and then it might connect and then it might scan completely logical I'd worked my way through all the manuals of gobbledygook and it didn't make sense so I did this and it worked God speaking to me that's what I think we have to face the reality, the challenge, God solves our problems if only we will let him. And I'm not very good at it. 
But I found that if I rejoice that God is in charge, even through gritty teeth, I get through. That's point one. Rejoice always because God is king. Second, pray without ceasing. We're all called to pray without ceasing. There's actually an organisation called 24-7 Prayer. You can look it up on the web for those who Google. It just seems impossible praying 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But Pete Gregg, who leads it, says, do not pray as you can't, just pray as you can. Find a way of prayer which suits you. I was brought up as a child to say the rosary. It's great for some, but saying the same set of prayers over and over again just bored the pants off me. As a young man with ADHD, I've got an attention span by the way of five seconds. So my way of prayer is to go out along the shawl and pray as I walk and allow my butterfly brain to flit around whatever catches my eye. Another guy called Brother Lawrence was a cook in a monastery. Because he was a cook, he didn't have time to attend the office, the church services, and pray properly. So he prayed when he walked, he worked, when he was doing the washing up and the cooking. Try lots of ways to pray, find one that suits you. If it's all too much, the best advice I can offer is in St Paul's letters to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. In other words, don't say anything, just let God do the work praying for you. The third point, do not quench the Spirit. What does it mean? Start with the word quench. We have a wood-burning stove, and as Stephen has proved with his candle, it's quite difficult to light things sometimes. We fill it with wood, but it doesn't warm the house till I set fire to it. Quenching puts out the fire, as with the candle, and you lose the heat, you lose the light. Quenching puts things out. Turn to the word spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity, the God who lives in us. The New Testament is clear that when Jesus rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit would come and dwell in us. Not just those who are licensed by the bishop, but all of us. And the Holy Spirit dwelling within us will give us the power to live as we should, if only we give him the space, as proved by my first story. What Paul is warning about in this short phrase, do not quench the Spirit, is we should not act in a way that puts out the flame of God living in us. And I suggest there's two ways we can put out the flame. There are more, but... The first is to say, we're unworthy, a Uriah the Heap approach, and so God will not dwell in us. It's a false argument because everybody's unworthy, we all know that. If God had made us it, as worthy, we must not, uh, sorry, God has made us worthy by Jesus' death on the cross. And therefore we should not throw that gift away by saying we're unworthy. We mustn't turn down the gift of the Spirit. And the second is to say God only dwells in priests and people with dog collars. God comes to us all if we will only ask. Therefore, spirits in, therefore Paul's instruction is that all of us should say, Yes, Lord, come, Lord, fill me, Lord, and set me on fire. <clears throat> and the fourth point that Paul makes. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. In three places in his letters, that's Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 4, Paul lists some of the ways that the Spirit helps us to be church together. And one of those ways is the gift of prophecy. It leads all the lists after the Apostles. Here Paul instructs us to listen to what these people say. 
but he acknowledges the problem of falsehood or in modern parlance fake news or what the politicians have to tell us how do we know those who tell us the truth from those who get it wrong and mislead us that's why we must use a process of testing everything that people including me stood here at the front tells us what God wants us to do I don't have time this morning to set out the full process but everyone must check any teaching against scriptures tradition and what other wise Christians tell them so point five Paul's hold fast to what is good abstain from every form of evil this point is so obvious I'd hardly need to repeat it however the church has continually failed to achieve it either the positive side do good look after the poor self-interest seems to take over all the time or the negative side abstain from evil which we can see the outfall in the latest report from child sexual abuse about the church and the reason is simple we keep trying to do both from our own strength and the old testament is the story of the repeated failure of people to keep god's law by their own strength the current report on child sexual abuse drives this home as do the arguments exploding around lgbt plus issues human beings are too weak to do what we should do paul knows this and look at the order he provides his summary step three that is do not quench the spirit comes before step five we try ever so hard to be good and we forget to ask god to help us to be good our problem is we're addicted to sin or whatever it is and as you know those who studied alcoholics anonymous it has a 12-step process the first step is to admit that we have a problem to admit that we have a problem of greed or whatever it is mine is a short temper it's unfortunate that many people who attend church think the solution to this problem of evil is just to point out how bad those who don't come to church are. That's why Jesus tells the story of the man with the log of timber in his eye trying to remove a speck of sawdust from the eye of a friend. You can tell that Jesus was a carpenter. In addition, Luke tells us the story of Jesus going to have dinner at the house of the local rector. Jesus ends up pointing out that the local prostitute who was washing his feet with her hair was more righteous than the priest who invited him to dinner. To be good requires us to accept that we need the Holy Spirit indwelling in us to change us and make us different. And so I come to the final point of Paul's summary of what it means to be church. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the one who is faithful, he will do this. As I've just said, we can't do the good we want to do until we allow ourselves to be controlled by the God living in us. Only when we allow God the Holy Spirit to burn up the bad things in us and provide the gifts and grow the fruit to do good, can we do good and abstain from evil. So in this season of Lent, as we prepare for the coming of the King, Lord Jesus, we need to carefully consider the manifesto of the coming King and his kingdom. We want to celebrate his coming among us, and I hope and pray the six points in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians will allow us to celebrate, to take an active part in the great party, the banquet 
to celebrate the kingdom of King Jesus. Let us put on our party clothes, light up our lives with the fire of God's love and celebrate with joy the coming King. Amen. So as we reflect on that manifesto of God's kingdom, let us stand to declare our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from the Holy Spirit and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made God. For our God sake he was crucified and conscious of it. He suffered death and was buried. On the God third God day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sit or kneel to pray. Mindful of the words of the prophet Isaiah, we gather our thoughts and prayers with hope and humbly call on God to help us in our needs. Holy God, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of Christ, we ask that you will answer our prayers and make us a holy people, fit to greet him and with eager heart. We pray for all leaders of our church. Particularly, we pray for Nick, our diocesan bishop, and Helen Ann, our area bishop. May they be blessed with wisdom and holiness to guide us through this season to a holy, peaceful, and joyful Christmas. We raise before you our church here in this benefice. And we ask that with eager longing for the return of Christ, our Advent celebrations may help all who join with us to prepare a place in their hearts and homes for you. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Creator God, help the leaders of nations to seek that justice and peace which come from the word of God. May there be good news for the poor and the broken-hearted, release for those illegally or wrongly imprisoned, and an end to conflicts throughout the world which lead to so much grief and mourning. We pray for all those who are striving to adjust to a new way of being normal in these difficult times as COVID-19 continues. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Father God, your Son Jesus lived an ordinary life in Nazareth with human parents, brothers and sisters. He understands the difficulties faced in families. We pray for all of those involved in providing support for families and strengthening our community life. 
We pray for those who have not yet heard of the coming of Christ. And we pray that this Christmas they may hear and believe the good news and receive the gift of the Christ child. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Merciful God, may your blessing be upon all those who are in pain or sickness, those who are anxious or troubled. We know that you are always present with us, even when sometimes you seem far away. Help us to feel your presence when we pass through dark places and sustain us and all who suffer. We remember those this morning who have asked for our prayers. We remember George, Frank, Kathleen and Chris. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Gracious God, may those who have died be granted the peace of your heavenly kingdom. Give rest to the souls of all those who have gone from our lives to meet with you. And may they, now released from pain or sorrow, find life eternal at rest in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Father God, we, as we continue this Advent journey, teach us to turn to you in times of joy and pleasure, as well as we do when faced with fear and sorrow. Help us to put our differences behind us and to unite behind the great commission of Jesus to make disciples of all nations and all people. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another from behind our masks and where we are standing. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God. This morning we're using Eucharistic Prayer F on the right-hand side of your page. The Lord is here. Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one. 
enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb, and rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us per a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with St John and St Matthew and all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The body of Christ keep us in eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep us in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world, and will send him again to be our judge. Give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before uh, we hear and receive God's blessing, I forgot one notice at the beginning. We are going to be having a PCC meeting on Thursday. Um, Hilda has the agendas for those who are here, and if we could deliver them to anybody who isn't here, um, that would be really great. Uh, we, need, we, we need to get one done so that we can elect our officers ready for uh, next, so that we can continue into next year. So would you please stand to hear and receive God's blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path. Make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ.